Terry putting money and a stroll in front of the paparazzi, the people he is supposed to despise above all else, over seeing and interacting with his family. Hello everyone, welcome to Royal News Network. My name is Brittany and today we are talking about Prince Harry's surprise court appearance in the United Kingdom. He went as part of a lawsuit he is in against the Associated Newspapers. He's joined by Elton John, Elizabeth Hurley, Sadie Frost, and a couple other people. And they are in process of suing the Associated Newspapers, so basically that's the Daily Mail, over supposed wiretapping, private investigators, and, and all sorts of things that increased Harry's paranoia and resulted in him cutting off friends. Now, while that is quite sad, the big and glaring question of this whole thing is, why are you there, Harry, when you could have live streamed the whole thing from your the comfort of your own home? You didn't have to travel. You didn't have to increase the carbon emissions across the planet. And most notably, you went on the same day that Charles was supposed to be doing something very, very important. And you're also not gonna see your family. You're willing to come to the UK for a lawsuit where you can potentially make money, but you're not willing to see your own family. So we're gonna go over a little bit of those details today and why this appearance is really quite abhorrent and terrible in terms of Harry and Meghan's PR as pretty much everything they do always is. But if you guys haven't been here to Royal News Network before, like I said, my name is Brittany. And on this channel, I provide compelling royal commentary about the latest news and sometimes a little bit of gossip as well. In addition, I will be reviewing television shows and movies and sharing a bit about history too. I am currently a PhD student and I have been a very, very avid royal watcher for over 10 years. So I watch the UK newspapers. I keep up with royal forums about all the royals, not just the Brits. So if you guys want to subscribe, that would be fantastic. I would love to have you back. I also have a weekly newsletter, Royal Wire. I also have a fashion channel that'll be back up and running in April regarding royals as well. And then I also have an upcoming trip to the UK. And so I do have somebody who has moved up from the wait list to my trip. So I, if you want to get on the wait list for that, that would be great. And I should have a couple other trips coming up soon. So if you want to tour some of Europe with me and go to Pretty Castles, I would love to have you. And before we go into Prince Harry's court case, another breaking news from the night before is that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have also revealed through Archwell their financials on their I-990 form. This is a form that nonprofits have to disclose to the public. And it was rather interesting as it seems like they only have two donations, one for 10 million, one for 3 million, and maybe $4,000 of some other donations. It was really quite sparse, and their poor guy who's running it, James Holt, was only had $60,000 as a salary. I believe he probably gets more from the whatever Archwell company they have. I think everything's kind of melded together, but that is quite a pittance compared to where he has to live, which is in Southern California, which requires you to earn a good six figures to make it worthwhile. So that was rather interesting. I'll probably do a whole video on that. But back to this court case with Harry because his surprise, again, appearance in the UK, there were rumors about it the day before, is rather interesting because he didn't have to be there. And his appearance raises so many questions. I feel like optically for Harry and Meghan, it looks so completely bad because there's just so many reasons. They're environmentalists. He could have done this from his home. He didn't have to waste the carbon emissions flying over to the UK to do this. It also looks hypocritical because he's definitely playing up to the media as he's walking in with one notable exception. Yet he has said in interviews before that every time the camera clicks, it's, it's a memory, a terrible memory of my mother. And I, I remember her dying and how terrible that was. And so it's like, but what is it, dude? You either hate the cameras or you love the cameras. You need to, you need to pick a lane here. And it's just another example of how their PR and all their messaging is essentially all over the place based on what they need in that particular moment. And so it gives the public the perception that they are rather flaky and they really don't mean anything they say. And I think that intention and that realization is growing and growing. And also raises some very interesting questions about who Harry is and what he really cares about. Is it the people of the UK? Is it the people who are helped by his charity? Or is it the Invictus Games Warriors? Is it his family? Or is everything Harry does now based on a bottom line? Will he do anything except for try to make as much money as humanly possible? Will he do anything that serves the greater 
purpose besides his bank account? I think that's a huge question Harry has to answer. But number one, let's get into the hypocrisy of this whole thing. So go ahead and take a listen to this clip here. This was from an interview that Prince Harry did for ITV with Tom Bradby while they were in Africa, him and Meghan on their tour. It was their last foreign royal tour. So go ahead and take a listen to this clip here. Every single time I see a camera, every single time I hear a click, every single time I see a flash, it takes me straight back. So in that respect, it's, it's, the, it's the worst reminder of her life as opposed to the best. Okay, so Harry says that the cameras are essentially traumatizing for him. He does not like them. Somewhat understandable, his mother obviously died in an accident that probably was to a certain extent influenced by the paparazzi chasing them. Although, to be fair, it was a drunk driving accident. It had really, to a certain extent, nothing to do with the paparazzi. The driver was drunk. Diana was not wearing a seatbelt, which may have saved her life. So everybody wear a seatbelt, that is very important. And also, Diana constantly called the paparazzi. She would just get angry when they took the picture she wanted and then they didn't leave. Well, you can't really play the game without the game coming back and playing you. And I feel like that's the mess Harry and Meghan are in in so many ways. So Harry hates the press. Harry hates the cameras. Harry hates all of it. So watch him arrive here. And I particularly love this video because Harry's own hypocrisy literally smacks him in the face. So go ahead and take a watch here. Why are you here, sir? I just love that he's, he's got the swagger. And he's like, yeah, I, you know, I'm here in the courtroom. I just got out of my taxi because I'm a low rent royal now. And I'm, I was like, I'm okay. Hello guys. Good morning. Smack right into a camera. Like his own hypocrisy is literally smashing him in the face. And you can tell he gets a bit irritated by that. But he's the guy who chose to go in the main entrance instead of the side entrance that everybody else went into who was famous and part of this trial. They went in the side entrance. Harry went in the main entrance. He wanted the attention. This paparazzi stroll, which again, he's supposed to hate, was very, very deliberate. He very much deliberately did this. He's playing very much out of the C-list actress handbook that Meghan Markle gave him to do the paparazzi, paparazzi strolls, get your name in the paper, because that's what's important is getting people's eyeballs on you. No matter if it's good or bad press, get your get the people's eyeballs on you. Another point to consider is how incredibly stupid this all is. Yes, I know I shouldn't say that, but this is pointless. This is a dead end avenue that Harry is going down with this court case. Because most of what happened, allegedly, some of the worst of it happened a decade, if not more ago. And I get it. It's still awful and terrible, but I don't think much of this is still happening. So really, he's going after, he's beating a dead horse. Yes, maybe some of what is being alleged against Associated Newspapers is correct. However, most of this is just not a factor anymore. So what would the point of this be? Well, Harry says, you know, I, I had trauma from this and I lost friendships over this. So I'm going to have him read you a little bit of the report here. Harry said he began the case after being told that Burroughs, so this is one of the private investigators, admitted to targeting me, it was claimed. His lawyer said Burroughs either personally or through corporate aliases hacked phones, tapped landlines, fraudulently obtained utility records, bank and other financial information that was involved in bugging and vehicle trafficking. And obviously those are very, very serious allegations and Harry said that he's lost friendships over this, that they went after his girlfriend at the time, Chelsea Davey, Cressida Bonus. But you got to remember, those relationships are, were close. I mean, Chelsea Davey for sure was over a decade ago. That's how long ago that ended. And Cressida ended, what, 2014 or something like that? So these are not recent relationships. These are quite old. And so what is the point of this court case? Yes, terrible things happen that should not have happened, but I believe one of the things they're citing is Elizabeth Hurley's reaction to asking Elton J John and David Furnish to be the godparents of her son. Her son's what in isn't he 20 now? He's in his late teens for sure, 18, 19, now 20. So these are things that happened a very, very long time 
time ago. And they seem to have not really a ton of evidence that some of this stuff is happening now. Now, granted, again, the British press can be much more aggressive than the American press in certain instances. However, Harry and Meghan have made it a point to antagonize the press. And then they get mad that the press writes stories about them that they don't like. So what do they do? They sue. And do those negative stories cease? No, because Harry and Meghan have not changed their behavior. So because Harry and Meghan's behavior has not changed, they're constantly chasing the fame monster. They're constantly trying to get their names in the newspapers, which is what this stunt was all about, is to raise the profile of this case. If Harry goes, well, the profile's raised, so isn't that great? Yeah, but you're kind of self-defeating in so many ways. It's pointless. It's rather dumb. Because if you're hoping at the end of the day that this changes the public perception of you, your wife, and how the newspapers are going to report about you, no. In fact, if I was a journalist, that would make me want to go after you harder. Because I want to know why this guy keeps continuing to target us. What is perhaps he hiding? Because we've done everything above board. Let's just say that the Associated Newspapers did do everything above board. Why do you want this prince who lives in California, who does absolutely nothing but tells everybody how terrible you are, and then goes and struts his stuff in front of the court? Why would you go, oh, you know, he is a prince. Oh, his wife. Uh, you know, she had two negative stories written about her in the beginning called all of us racist. And now we're all just going to back off. I was like, no, this is just going to make everything worse. He is antagonizing the press. He is playing the same games his mother did that made her, I think, so miserable sometimes. Because once you start playing the game, once you start feeding the media and doing these little paparazzi strolls and trying to get the attention on you, guess what? The attention goes goes negative. It, it often flips back around on you because guess what? You don't control it. No matter what you think, you don't control it. And this is all about control. Harry and Meghan want to, all of us to live under their totalitarian rule. They want us to know what they want us to know when they want us to know it. They don't want us to look into anything. Like when we questioned a while ago why they didn't release their 990, I-990, why there weren't any financial details on their annual report. Well, they did have to eventually release their I-90, but we had the right to question why there was literally no financial details on their charity statements. Because to a certain extent, because they live here in the United States and everything, and they constantly tell us how great they are, I want to see that greatness in action. I don't see that much of it. I don't see that much of it. So this stunt, I think, is just going to run Harry and Meghan's public perception into the hole more. Again, Harry and Meghan, I feel like one of their critical things is that they constantly want us to believe their narrative. And they, they charge at it so hard that people believe it less. It doesn't work that way. You can't just constantly tell people how great you are and then when they question something, get all mad and huffy about it and go, well, you shouldn't question me. I am perfect. And that stuff is really starting to blow up in Harry and Meghan's face so, so much. And during the court case itself, it just didn't seem like there wasn't a ton necessary for Harry to do. It really wasn't necessary for him to be there. I guess he wanted to lend his presence to the jury or the judges. Why do you think judge? Justice is supposed to be blind. You really think you being there really should shift the balance? I don't think so. I don't think so. You're a half-wit prince who doesn't even live in the UK anymore. Why do you think they should be moved by you? You're actively suing pretty much everybody you possibly can because that is your direction. You guys sue when you don't like something. And again, some of what the Associated Newspapers could have done could have been exactly what Harry and Meghan and those other people are charging. However, Harry's directive in this is to change the way media runs. He wants to control it. He wants to make it better for everyone. Really, he wants to make it better for himself and Meghan Markle. Actually, really Meghan Markle. At the end of the day, Meghan is mad at the media, so Harry's mad at the media, and Harry needs to change the media because Harry and Meghan know how the media should run. It shouldn't run in the avenue of free speech. No, 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 no. No, no, no. It should run under the avenue of Harry and Meghan and their, their vision for things because they know best. That is what Harry is driving towards. And I don't know if there'll be a financial sentiment at the end of this trial, but it really seems like 
probably that's a huge portion of it as well. In addition to perhaps vindication and Harry just wanting his time in the spotlight, there perhaps is definitely some money involved here. He's doing this because Perhaps him and Megan need a little cash and they just love throwing money at lawyers. And oh my goodness, those lawyers cost a pretty penny. And at some point you do have to pay and that starts to drain you a little bit. Now again, Harry and Megan have a decent amount of money, but I think they're draining it quite a bit with their very, very extensive security team that I think is overkill in a lot of ways. Again, not saying that they don't need security, but I think if they live like in their gated neighborhood, how often do they really need full-time security on the grounds all the time when they live in a gated neighborhood? Probably not that much. Probably really not that much. So I just feel like that to a certain extent is very, very much pointless. But the big question people have, the thing that I think irks people more than anything else, and the reason why this dumb stunt is stupid, and doesn't work for Harry and Meghan at all, is you will go to the UK to go to a court case where you can make some money, you can raise your profile, but you won't go even visit your family. And this trip could have been so much more grating if this was still officially the first day of Charles's tour of France. Harry perhaps did this initially. It was initially planned to push his own father, the king, out of the newspaper so he can and Meghan could get more attention while his father undertakes a very important tour of France, which is one of Britain's now very close allies, even though historically they have not been. The Britain's trying to grow their relationship with France and Germany, which will be the second leg of Charles's tour that he will go on. Of course, the France tour was canceled last Friday, so it is entirely possible that Harry and Meghan made the last minute change to go ahead and go. But I imagine this was planned beforehand. And how underhanded and ugly is it for Harry to take a moment of state and turn it into a publicity stunt? But that's all Harry and Meghan do is turn historic state occasions that serve a greater purpose for countries, for communities, for the world, than to turn it into a personal stunt that's all about them. You even have this with the coronation itself. Harry and Meghan are apparently making claims that they wanna be on the balcony. Of course they do. Why wouldn't they wanna be up there? Because they wanted to be up there last time and they got told no, which they should be told this time too. I'm of the opinion, I really do think actually the only people who should be up there are working royals, maybe even a slim down working royal net, and the the Waleses. The Waleses, obviously the king and queen, the Waleses are the most important because they are the future. They are the future of the crown. Harry and Meghan are the past. They're no longer relevant in this situation. But Harry and Meghan wanted to be a special family moment. The balcony appearance for the coronation is not a family moment. It is a state occasion. It is an occasion to recognize the transfer of power officially between Queen Elizabeth II, who reigned for 70 years, and her son, Charles III. It is not an occasion to parade around Archie and Lily for the pointlessness that their position and their lives now hold in terms of the greaterness of the UK history. Harry and Meghan have made themselves irrelevant to the UK institution, so they have no business being on that balcony. Now, a special family moment. It's the trooping the colors. That is an actual special family moment. And what about the special family moments for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, which they ignored entirely pretty much, except for the Thanksgiving service for Her Majesty. Other than that, they ignored it. They attempted to go to the Queen with a professional photographer to get that oh so desired shot of Lilibet and Lilibet, only to be told, yeah, no, your professional photographer cannot come to the palace and take pictures of the Queen and Lilibet because you have lost the right to that. Perhaps there is one that exists, but it's controlled by the palace. It's not controlled by Harry and Meghan because Harry and Meghan have made themselves untrustworthy. And the more that came out through the Netflix series and the more that's come out through Spare, the less trustworthy they are. Their trust has cratered to everyone. And what do they do? Of course, they won't decide to go to a state occasion like the coronation. They're dragging their feet going, well, we're not sure we want X, Y, and Z. Well, buck up and shut up. That's not your call. You guys are irrelevant to this institution. That's the life you chose. You chose irrelevancy. You chose Hollywood over royalty and you have to live 
with that. But Harry came at a time when he knew that his father would be busy either on the tour, and now he's also been told, yeah, you know, your dad's busy. And then, of course, William is also on break with his children and his family, probably up in Norfolk. So Harry did this knowing he probably wouldn't see his family and making it very clear that he wouldn't see his family, yet he was entirely more than happy to parade himself, debase himself, according to his own ideology, if you think about it, to make a scheduled paparazzi stroll strutting like a peacock until he ran into a photographer. And I think the Telegraph had it pretty good here when they said, smiling broadly, it was as if he had never been away, let alone written a bombshell autobiography that has torn the royal family in two. Yet if Prince Harry expected the royal red carpet to be rolled out for his somewhat shock appearance at the High Court on Monday for the start of his case against the Daily Mail publisher Associated Newspapers for unlawful information gathering, then he was sadly mistaken. No sooner had the Duke, 38, landed in London from Montecito, California, than his nearest and dearest had made their excuses for not seeing him. Despite France having postponed Monday's visit by the king and queen consort due to ongoing pensions protests, Buckingham Palace apparently made it clear there would be no time for a meeting between father and prodigal son. Although he did inform the monarch that he would be in the neighborhood, he was told his father was busy, despite having a last minute two day gap in the royal diary. And that is how the royals should deal with Harry. Obviously Harry and Meghan have some demands that they wanted to make before the coronation. Well, I'm sorry, Harry, but those probably aren't gonna happen because guess what? You have literally zero leverage in this situation. So the monarchy is rightly ignoring you when it comes to this. But the idea that he would come to the UK and go to a court case, put his lawsuits above his family, that tells you where Harry is. He's putting lawsuits and money above family because if you think about it as well, this is not just about Charles and William. This is about the queen. Harry and Meghan deliberately, I think, avoided going back to London to visit the queen in her final year. In fact, Harry and Meghan were in the UK when the queen passed away. And in fact, the day before she died, it was Harry and Meghan's free day. They had an entire day free. We don't know, maybe they had some other plans. But wouldn't you think one of the few times you're in the UK, what did you think you'd make time to see your grandmother? Your grandmother who's 96, frail, just lost her husband of 70 plus years. When did you think it would be rather smart to take some time to fly up to Scotland to visit her? I know it's a last minute trip. I know it would be hard, but they didn't have anything to do till the evening, but they didn't go. At that moment, again, they put themselves over the queen and this, image of Harry and Meghan, I think serves them absolutely no purpose in the long run. It makes them look greedy, selfish, manipulative, dismissive of family bonds. And although yes, the state occasion for the King's coronation is not a special family gathering, obviously it's a hugely international event with dynastic implications, but it is a, an opportunity for Harry to show that he does care about his family. This court appearance screams, I care about myself and nothing else. It's all about me against the world. I don't care about my family who's raised me, who's given me money, who's helped and supported me for decades. It's all about the Benjamins. And isn't that just incredibly, incredibly both sad and pathetic? And if Harry thought his strutting into the courthouse would gain him any followers or good press, I don't think so, Harry. You would be much better served instead of strutting into a courtroom to bow your head and go see your father, go see your brother, take your pain and grievances and actually deal with them in a healthy manner instead of making baseless and damaging allegations from across the pond knowing that your family will not react because they have a greater purpose and you don't anymore. You are just in it for yourself. And most importantly, Meghan Markle. Meghan Markle has always wanted to be famous. I don't think infamous was exactly what she had in mind in turn into the negative sense, but I feel like that's what Harry and Meghan have become. So Harry, you would be much better spent going into Buckingham Palace with your head hanging low rather than having your head held high in front of a courthouse. So guys, let me know what you think of this video. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.